Thank you and good morning. Good morning, get started. Um, but before we begin the council session today, I'm going to make a couple of announcements. Due to the continuing threat to public health, COVID-19, and the Delta variant, City Council is currently meeting remotely. We're using Microsoft Teams to make this remote meeting possible. Instructions for how the public may view the meeting and offer public comment are included in the stated meeting notice that was published in the Daily News Enquirer and Legal Intelligencer prior to the meeting and can also be found on phlcouncil.com. I now note that the hour has come. The clerk will please call the roll to take attendance and members that are in attendance, please indicate that you are present uh, by saying a couple of words. Make sure that um, you are uh, registered on the screen. Mr. Decker, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bath. Good morning, Council President and colleagues. Happy birthday, Mr. President, and it's good to be back with everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Councilwoman Brooks. Good morning, Council President, colleagues. It's so good to be back together like this. And happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Council McDonald. Uh, good morning, Council President. And happy birthday. 38, I guess. That's pretty good. And uh, good take it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Council. Good morning to you. Also, Council President, I want to thank you and leadership for changing the date to uh, celebrate the Jewish uh, holiday of Yom Kippur. I really appreciate it, and I know everybody in Philadelphia who celebrates appreciates it, so thank you all so very much, really. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Our pleasure. Councilwoman Gauthier. Good morning and happy birthday, Council President. Um, yeah. Good morning, yeah. colleagues, and happy first day, everybody. Good morning, Council Lady. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues, and good morning, Philadelphia. Happiest of birthdays to you, Council President. May you have a blessed, joyous day today. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councilwoman. Thank you so much. Good morning to you. Councilman Green. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleague. Happy birthday to you, Council President. Uh, also, happy belated birthday to our Majority Leader, uh, Sherelle Parker. And as my wife, who also has a birthday this time period, um, she always reminds me it's Virgo season. Uh, it's good to be back with all of the citizens in the city of Philadelphia, uh, city of brotherly love and sisterly effectiveness. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Councilman, and thank you so much. It is so true. <laughs> Councilwoman Gim. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, Philadelphia. I'm looking forward to a wonderful uh, session of City Council. Wishing you the happiest of birthdays and a really blessed year as well. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. And good morning to you. Councilman Heenan. Good morning, Council President. Happy birthday and good morning, colleagues. Good morning, Councilman. Councilman Johnson. Um, good morning, Council colleagues. Good morning, Council President. Happy birthday. Uh, feels good to be back in the City Council. It feels good to see all my colleagues um, virtually. Um, sending prayers out to all the families who have lost um, loved ones to senseless gun violence. Thank you, Councilman. And good morning to you. You're welcome. Councilman Jupp. Councilman O. Good morning. I'm president. Uh, I'm, I'm present, not president. I'm president and uh, happy birthday, <laughs> Council President. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. A good morning to you. Councilman O'Neill. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Councilman. Councilwoman Parker. Good morning, colleagues. It's great to see everyone. Happy birthday, Council President, and looking forward to a very fruitful season. Thank you, Councilwoman, and good morning to you. Councilwoman Quinone Sanchez. Good morning, Council President. Uh, felicidades to all the Virgos, uh, in addition to Council President. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, Councilwoman, and thank you so much. Councilman Squilla. 
Good morning, Council President and colleagues. Uh, Honored to celebrate your birthday today with uh, all our colleagues here on City Council and also a belated birthday to our Majority Leader Parker. And uh, looking forward to uh, getting the business today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman, and good morning to you. Councilman Thomas. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, like everybody else said, happy birthday, Council President. Happy belated birthday to my council person, my majority leader, Councilman Parker. Happy to be back, ready to get to the meeting. Thank you, Councilman. And we forgot to do sports talk this morning, but we'll double up next week. Thank you. <laughs> we'll council make President up Clark, and happy birthday, Council President. Thank you. And Fred, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you. Okay, we've established a quorum, and now we're going to get to the business at hand. Um, let's start out with an invocation this morning for my good friend, a very good friend, uh, the Reverend Dr. Herbert H. Lust II, a pastor of Greater Exodus Baptist Church. He is, today, he is here today as my guest, and I would ask all members and guests to please bow your head for the invocation. I understand. Pastor, please. Let, good morning, everyone, and let us pray. Our God and Father, we do thank you for these moments, these times that we have, even though they're trying times. We pray, oh God, that you would bless this body with the wisdom and understanding that can effectively make change in such a way that it bless citizens of our city. With all the challenges that are before us politically, economically, socially, senseless death and blind and unbridled violence. I pray, oh God, that you give these men and women great wisdom. I ask that you give them the wisdom of Solomon, the courage of David, the leadership of Moses, the strategy of Joshua, the faith of Abraham, the endurance of Nehemiah, the fire of Elijah and the commitment of Mary and Martha. We ask, oh God, that you bless our president of this city council, to bless our mayor, that you would bless, oh God, Congress and Senate of this United States of America, that you bless our president. Then, oh God, we pray that you would bless the citizens of our city. And then, Lord, we bless you before we leave. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. So we praise you and we bless you. We thank you, O oh Father, for life and strength, for health. We ask these things in the name of our Lord Jesus the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Adonai, El Shaddai, Elohim, Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Zikindu, we bless your name. In the name of our Lord, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much for those inspiring words today. We really appreciate you. Uh, being here today, and we appreciate all for the city of Philadelphia. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Um, our next order of business is the approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, June 24th, and the chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, June 24th, 2021, be approved. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, June 24, 2021, stand approved. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Those opposed, aye. Have it. And the journal is approved. And our next order of business is request for leave of absence. And the chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. There is a request for a leave of absence from Councilmember Jones. Thank you, Councilwoman. The leave shall be granted to our good friend, Councilman Jones. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Parker for a motion concerning certain legislative matters that may arise during the course of today's session of council and that were not listed on the calendar circulated prior to today's session. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I move that any of the following matters, if considered today, may be added to the agenda for this session of council and as required by law, subsequently published on an amended agenda after the consideration of those matters. Resolutions authorizing hearings, amendments to bills on first reading, the reconsideration of a bill vetoed by or recalled from the mayor. Resolutions taking substantive action to be voted on in this session, a motion to withdraw a bill or resolution that is not on the calendar, and a motion placing a bill or resolution on or returning a bill or resolution from the suspended calendar that is not listed on today's calendar. The purpose of this motion is to provide the public with notice concerning possible actions by council that arose too late to be included on the calendar that was published prior to today's session. Phew, Mr. President. Thank you, thank you. Can we get a second? Second. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and promptly seconded that the legislative matters stated by Councilwoman Parker may be added to the agenda for today should those matters arise during the course of the council session of council. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 To oppose, I have it. Motion carries. Thank you all very much. Uh, and our next order of business is communication. And the clerk will please read the messages from the mayor and any other communication that he may have in his possession today. To the president and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, from the mayor, pursuant to sections 4604 and 2307 of the Home Rule Charter and today transmitting to the council, the recommendation of the City Planning Commission on the following bills. Bill numbers 210629, 210633, 210634, 210637, and 210638. And I am pleased to advise you that on June, June 28, July 1, July 15, August 26, and September 15, 2021, I signed all the bills that were passed by council on June 17, 2021, except bill number 210511, which I am returning without my signature. And that on June 28, July 1, July 7, July 15, August 5, September 8, and September 15, 2021, I signed all the bills that were passed by council at its session on June 24, 2021. And I'm submitting herewith for the consideration of your honorable body, an ordinance approving the 2021-2022 Neighborhood Preservation Initiative Program Statement and Budget, which addresses the expenditure of $100 million by various agencies in the first year of the Neighborhood Preservation Initiative Program, and approving a substantial amendment to the Annual Action Plan 2021 through 2022, the city's consolidated housing and housing related expenditures plan to incorporate the program statement and budget into the action plan. And an ordinance authorizing the city treasurer on behalf of the city to enter into an amendment to an agreement with Citizens Bank of Pennsylvania for provision of payroll banking services to the city, all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you, Mr. Decker. And our next order of business is the introduction of bills and resolutions. And by way of a reminder, uh, we are asking that all resolutions, including privilege resolutions, be placed on a final passage calendar for the next session of council, unless they are being referred to committee. In our current remote environment, this procedure will provide an appropriate opportunity for public comment. I want to thank you in advance uh, for your anticipated cooperation. Uh, Mr. Decker, will you please read the titles of the legislation that is being offered today by the members? Councilwoman Parker offers four bills and three resolutions. On behalf of Council President Clark, an ordinance amending chapter section, uh, amending section 14, 529 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled VDO, 5th District Overlay District, to prohibit certain bonuses. And an ordinance amending section 14, 504 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled NCO, Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District, by expanding the existing Strawberry Mansion NCO area to include an area bounded by Lehigh Avenue, 29th Street, Sedgley and Sedgley Avenue. And an ordinance providing for the submission of the qualified electors of the City of Philadelphia of the proposal set forth in a resolution approved by Council, proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter to revise the composition of the Zoning Board of Adjustment by increasing the number of appointees, or adding for confirmation by Council of appointees and specifying qualifications that appointees must possess. And on her own behalf, an ordinance amending Chapter 950-100 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Food Delivery Services to modify the limitation on fees 
charged to food service establishments. Those four bills will be referred to the appropriate committee. On behalf of Council President Clark, Councilwoman Park offers a resolution proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter to revise the composition of the Zoning Board of Adjustment by increasing the number of appointees, providing for confirmation by Council of appointees, and specifying qualifications that appointees must possess. For the committee. And on her own behalf, Councilwoman Park offers a resolution authorizing the Committee on Law and Government and the Committee on Commerce and Economic Development to hold joint hearings to examine the relationship between public safety and the economic vitality of neighborhood commercial corridors, and further exploring any and all broad-based neighborhood-focused and intergovernmental public safety initiatives that have worked in the city in the past and have worked or are working in other cities. Today's challenge. And a resolution recognizing Joseph T. Ashdale Jr., Chairman, and Karen M. Wrigley upon their retirement from the board of the Philadelphia Parking Authority. Next week's calendar. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson offers one bill and two resolutions entitled an ordinance amending Title IX of the Philadelphia Code entitled Regulation of Businesses, Trades, and Professions by adding a new chapter requiring certain businesses or professions to provide disclosures regarding tangled titles. For the committee. And a resolution authorizing the Committee on Housing, Neighborhood Development, and the Homeless to hold a hearing to discuss the impact of tangled titles in Philadelphia. Today's calendar. And a resolution calling on Congress to pass the Build Back Better Act to provide resources to Philadelphia and cities like it to combat climate change while creating jobs and fostering local economic development. And now we'll go next week's calendar. Councilwoman no, Gim offers. My apologies, Mr. Decker. Uh, Council President, for the record, I just wanted to note that the resolution regarding tangled titles was co-introduced by my colleague, Councilmember Gaudier, who is the chair of the Committee on Housing. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Lady. Shall be noted. Mr. Decker. Mr. Decker, you're muted. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilwoman Gim offers two resolutions entitled a resolution denouncing attacks on efforts to address systemic racism in the United States and urging the Pennsylvania House of Representatives to reject House Bill 1532, which aims to prohibit instruction on the history of racial oppression and the examination of how racism functions in our law, policy, and society. Next week's calendar. And a resolution authorizing City Council Committees on Children and Youth and Finance to hold joint hearings on a plan to fund a comprehensive remediation and modernization of Philadelphia's public school buildings to address major facility flaws, adapt to a, uh, adapt to a changing climate, and ensure public school students have the safe and modern buildings they deserve. Chair, recognize Councilwoman Kim. Thank you so much, Council President. Um, today, I, along with 10 co-sponsors, calls upon our city and our city council body to substantively tackle the crisis of our school facilities. As the After the most difficult school year in recent history, it's more clear than ever that ensuring safe and supportive learning environments is the most crucial work that we can do. Amid tragic gun violence, economic hardship, and COVID, our schools play a critical role in helping young people rebuild their lives in uncertain and difficult times. Unfortunately, as we saw with the opening of school, uh, we have been met with story after story of school buildings yet again in disrepair. We join parents uh, and my colleague, uh, Council Member Brooks at SLA Bieber, where ongoing construction resulted in zero working bathrooms. Students were expected to use porta potties for the majority of the school year, if not for parent action. That would have been the reality for hundreds of students at one of the city's premier magnet schools. Bieber is the 12th school in the past two years to experience closure due to asbestos remediation, which has interrupted student learning and is disrupting the start of the most important school year on in recent memory. And we all know it's not just Bieber. 
even as schools open their doors to welcome our children. Parents at school after school in this city have been ringing the alarm on the deplorable conditions of our school buildings, leaking roofs, 95 degree classrooms, non-existent ventilation, continuing flaking lead paint, asbestos remediation, all of us know the list goes on and on. And that's why I'm glad that our council bodies are coming together to talk about what it would look like to fund a comprehensive remediation and modernization process for our city's public school buildings. There is no question the school district of Philadelphia has put forward hundreds of millions of dollars, has invested and expanded uh, their facilities in the last several years. But what we know is that this work at the margins is simply not enough. It's not enough to do repairs. We need a large scale modernization plan. Um, many of my colleagues, including council member Quinones Sanchez has, has highlighted the important issue of school feeder patterns that have long been antiquated and are built for a city, for a city of decades ago. Um, and it's clear that this is not the school district's responsibility actually, that this is not what um, major cities that are embarking on this work, they don't put it all on the school district. Um, there are independent authorities that take a look at this work um, that work in collaboration with the city, with planning, with the school district, adjusting our neighborhood patterns, our priorities for development, and most importantly, most importantly of all, prioritizing our children, prioritizing their experiences, prioritizing their families, and recognizing that schools can anchor communities that can then anchor a city. I look forward to having this conversation. I know it's going to be long. I also know it's going to be um, complicated. There's no question. And it will pull us down many roads. But I believe that we cannot afford to wait. We can now more than ever, um, we've got uh, billions potentially of dollars unspent at the state level. Um, that the Biden infrastructure plan that all of us are pushing hard for opens up more opportunities and that our city has a chance to lead on this issue and that the leadership actually doesn't come from Harrisburg or from Washington, DC. The leadership is already in our communities among parents who are already activated and, and organized uh, for change and justice and from young people themselves who deserve so much better than what they have right now. I look forward to that conversation and thank you very much, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, that will be on today's calendar. Councilman Heenan offers five bills and three resolutions entitled an ordinance amending section 9207 of the Philadelphia Code entitled motor vehicle repairs to prohibit the use of city streets for the sale or storage of motor vehicles. An ordinance amending title 13 of the Philadelphia Code entitled water and sewer by adding a new chapter 13700 entitled conversion of private water and sewer and stormwater lines to public ownership. And an ordinance amending chapter 94400 of the Philadelphia Code entitled responsible businesses business operations to revise what constitutes nuisance behavior. And an ordinance amending section 122809 of the Philadelphia Code entitled civil penalties and costs to change certain to change certain the penalties for parking on sidewalks. And an ordinance requiring the water commissioner on behalf of the city to convert certain water, sewer, and storm infrastructure on Well Street between Frankfurt Avenue and Charles Street from private to public infrastructure. Those problems will be referred to the appropriate committee. And three resolutions entitled a resolution. Honoring Gregory Bucarino for his dedication to community safety. Next week's calendar. And a resolution calling on the committee on licenses and inspections to hold hearings, examining construction code requirements, the enforcement of those requirements, inspector caseload and inspector staffing ratios, construction working conditions, and the city's response to worker misclassification on construction sites. Today's calendar. And a resolution recognizing September 2021 as prostate Awareness, Cancer Awareness Month to raise awareness about the importance of screening for and treatment of prostate, can prostate cancer to encourage cancer research and to encourage Philadelphians to take an active role in the fight to end prostate cancer. Next week's calendar. Council President, uh, uh, may I be recognized? This is Council McGinney. Chair recognizes. Thank you. I'd like to be recognized on uh, the specific resolution calling on the Committee of License and Inspections to hold hearings. Over the summer, 
a construction worker on a job site, another job site, by the way, uh, that is happening all too frequent, uh, near Juniata Park was buried by several tons of unstable, unsecured dirt on an Amazon construction site. The Philadelphia Fire Department personnel were able to extract this worker and transport him to a trauma center, but he died short time after. It is clear that job site safety standards, the standards in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and international cold codes were not met, not met. The failure of the site owner, Amazon, the general contractor, and the subcontractors to demand and enforce safety protocols on that site is illegal and it is and it cost this man his life. This isn't the first time a worker had seriously been injured or killed on a job site. In some cases, those injuries and deaths have been the result of freak accidents. Job sites are inherently risky places to be, but in many cases, the case of those injuries and death is willful an intentional failure of property owners, developers, and contractors to prioritize profit margins over people and the property that they're working on. The reasons why we have the Department of License and Inspections is to protect people and to protect property. When the water department, when the department allows construction, a construction site to operate despite the fact that the workers are misclassified, taken advantage of, and do not have OSHA 10 training as required by law. By law, working on job sites where code standards are not met, the department is failing Philadelphians. They are failing the entire city of Philadelphia. And when a worker dies as a result, I believe that the city of Philadelphia is also culpable for that death. For several years, I've advocated for a dramatic increase in the number of l &I inspectors to en enhance training and continuing education, resources for inspectors, and improve working conditions for inspectors. Proactive, thorough, and routine inspections of construction sites and strict adherence to all, capital A-L-L, -L, all requirements of the code will save lives and prevent unnecessary injuries. The city of Philadelphia is failing workers. They are failing the public by neglecting to enforce the law and invest resources into the Department of L&I. And I am introducing this resolution today because I've been talking about these issues for 3,544 days I've, as I've served as a member of city council. I am tired of talking about it. It's time that this administration makes job safety a real priority to its people, to its property, to the businesses, and to the future, and enforce the law that we have that exists on our books. So I'm asking the mayor, I'm asking the administration, enforce the law, staff the department properly, and make sure that everybody is held accountable all right, for the protection of people, the property, and the revenue, the revenue for programs that we all participate in, programs to help people lift out of poverty, programs, all right, to help uh, fund our schools, programs for all of the initiatives that this body wants to see to have Philadelphia set up for the for future and success is properly funded. Council President, I thank you for the time, and I hope all councils members uh take uh, take note of this serious issue as we move forward thank you thank you councilman thank you for your continuous um laser focus on that particular issue we appreciate it becker councilman jones offers four bills and three resolutions um, Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is offering that on the Councilman's behalf, I believe. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson offers on behalf of Councilman Jones four bills and three resolutions. 
and title an ordinance amending title for the Philadelphia Code entitled the Philadelphia Building Construction and Occupancy Code by modifying when notice must be given regarding demolitions and an ordinance amending esta establishing parking regulations in the vicinity of Allen's Lane and West Aiken Avenue and an ordinance amending section 9203 of the Philadelphia Code entitled street vendors by permitting vending on certain sections of 49th Street and an ordinance amending section 21203 of the Philadelphia Code entitled appointments to citizen police and oversight commission by revising the qualifications for appointments. Thank you. Those board bills will be referred to the appropriate committee. And three resolutions entitled the resolution authorizing the city council committee on public safety to hold public hearings on the interim report issued by the 100 shooting review committee. Today's calendar. And a resolution authorizing City Council's Committee of the Whole to hold public hearings on the status of the City of Philadelphia's Rebuild Initiative. Today's calendar. And a resolution supporting the National Minority Business Development Agency and recognizing October 4th through October 8, 2021 as Philadelphia Minority Enterprise Development Med Week, which provides critical information, resources, opportunities, and inspiration to the minority business community. Next week's calendar. Councilman Johnson offers one resolution entitled a resolution authorizing the Special Committee on Gun Violence Prevention to conduct hearings to examine the shortage of trauma counseling services and its impact on victims and co-victims of violence, gun violence. Today's calendar. Councilman Green offers five bills and three resolutions. On behalf of Council President Clark, Councilman Green offers an ordinance approving the 2021-2022 Neighborhood Preservation Initiative Program Statement and Budget, which addresses the expenditure of $100 million by various agencies in the first year of the Neighborhood Preservation Initiative Program, and approving a substantial amendment to the Annual Action Plan 2021-2022, through 2022, the City's Consolidated Housing, uh, housing and Housing-Related Expenditures Plan, to incorporate the program statement and budget into the annual plan. For the committee. Also on behalf of Council President Clark, an ordinance authorizing the city treasurer on behalf of the city to enter into an amendment to an agreement with Citizens Bank of Pennsylvania for provision of payroll banking services to the city. For the committee. On his own behalf, Councilman Green offers an ordinance continuing the Philadelphia Hospitality Improvement Levy District, a business improvement district encompassing certain existing and future hotel properties within the boundaries of the city of Philadelphia and continuing the Philadelphia Hospitality Improvement Levy District Corporation to serve as a neighborhood improvement district management association for the district. For the committee. And an ordinance authorizing generally the continued issuance and sale by the city of Philadelphia of gas works revenue notes of the city prescribing the form of notes and providing for their execution and payment pledging certain revenues of the, of the gas works as security adopting a rate covenant and directing the imposition and collection of rates and charges sufficient to comply therewith. The committee. And an ordinance amending subcode A, the Philadelphia Administrative Code of Title IV, the Philadelphia Building Construction and Occupancy Code of the Philadelphia Code by amending Section A703 entitled Special Certificate of Inspection to enhance building safety requirements for, edu for educational occupancies. Chair, recognize Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. Um, I want to thank uh, my colleagues who have co-sponsored this bill, uh, Council Members Gim, Brooks, Squilla, Heenan, Bass, and Gilmore Richardson. I uh, also want to thank uh, some of the comments that were made earlier by Council Member Gim, uh, as well as uh, Council Member Sanchez, as chair of the Education Committee, uh, who has also been working on this issue in reference to our school buildings. Uh, this issue of uh, asbestos is something that we as members of this body uh, have had concerns about for some time, uh, but it's not just as members of this body. Uh, many of the members of um, this legislative entity are parents. Um, not that long ago, Councilmember Brooks um, pulled many of us together uh, to rally at SLA Bieber, um, as well as attending a rally at Masterman regarding asbestos uh, in those schools. And there's a number of other schools that have had asbestos and mold in those school buildings. Uh, and that also brings it back to the perspective that this is not a new issue. This is an issue that we have been dealing with for some time. Going back to 2019, 
and we work at, we're trying to work with the school district and we were looking at doing legislation similar to this legislation to address this issue and we were getting the perspective that changes would occur and that legislation was based on the fact we had a teacher who was a former teacher at Meredith Nebinger who was diagnosed with mesothelioma. And so this is an issue that is important, not just to members of this body, but citizens all around the city of Philadelphia. And for me, it strikes a very personal issue. Uh, I've talked about this in many ways, about my mother teaching in the school district for uh, 31 years, 26 years at Olney High School. And I think about the time that she has dealt with asbestos at Olney. And I think about the teacher who was diagnosed with mesothelioma. What about her children? What about her loved ones? Um, what about our own children who are in our, our school buildings who are also dealing with asbestos? Um, my son at his school, we learned about asbestos in that school building. And we've tried to put our trust in the school district, but time and time and time again, that trust has not been there. And so we as a city need to take an active role in addressing this issue going forward, because we don't want to be in a situation where one of our loved ones or our children come back years later, and now they've been diagnosed with asbestos based on action that we should have taken. And it's time that we have stepped up to take on a more active role to make sure the city is doing what we need to do to make sure that these school buildings um, do not have asbestos and we're providing information that parents and teachers and employees and anyone in any of our school buildings have the information that they need that these school buildings are safe. And it's time that we have to do what we need to do to take that action. And I wanna thank all of my colleagues for being involved in this issue, for your work on this issue. I look forward to seeing all of you at our press conference at one o'clock with all of the various partners as part of our fund, our facilities coalition. Uh, this is an issue that we can unfortunately no longer trust the school district to do what needs to be done. And we as a city need to be actively engaged and address this issue. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilman. Um, that bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. Councilman Green offers a resolution initiating action to continue a business improvement district encompassing certain existing and future hotel properties within the boundaries of the city of Philadelphia. And now, that, sorry, wait. Great, Mr. Decker. And a resolution calling upon the Congress of the United States to enact the Able, a, Able Age Adjustment Act offered by Senator Bob Casey, which would increase 26 to from 26 to 46 the age threshold at which individuals with disabilities could, could save into tax favored accounts to pay for disability related expenses. Thanks, Ms. And a resolution honoring and congratulating Philly counts for their indispensable contribution to the 2020 census and their service to the residents of the city of Philadelphia. Next week's calendar. Thank you. Councilwoman Brooks offers one resolution entitled a resolution urging the U.S. Congress to pass Joint Resolution 21, known as the Abolition Amendment, to strike the slavery clause from the 13th Amendment and end the loophole in the U.S. Constitution that allows forced labor to continue in United States prisons as a punishment for crime. That will be on next week's calendar. Councilwoman Gautier offers one resolution entitled a resolution honoring the Preservation Alliance for Greater Philadelphia on the occasion of its 25th anniversary. And we'll be on next week's calendar. Councilman Thomas offers one resolution honoring and congratulating the champion of the week Imhotep Charter Girls Basketball Team for winning their Philadelphia Public League Championship title game for the 2020-2021. Next week's calendar. Councilman Squillow offers three bills and two resolutions entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Walnut Street, 9th Street, Locust Street, and 10th Street. 
Land and ordinance to amend the Philippi zoning mass by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Trenton Avenue, Cambria Street, Tulip Street, and William Street. Land and ordinance to amend section 14502 entitled CTR Center City Overlay District, all under certain terms and conditions. And as three bills will be referred to the appropriate committee. And a resolution recognizing and honoring the 9-11 Del Val, Delaware Valley Youth Athletic Association girls on the occasion of them winning the Pennsylvania Little League State Championships in Williamsport, PA. And that will be on next week's calendar. And a resolution recognizing and honoring the longstanding tradition of the St. Newman Goretti versus Southern Thanksgiving Day game, which has been a Thanksgiving Day staple in South Philadelphia for over 80 years. And that will be on next week's calendar. Councilwoman Bass offers three bills and five resolutions. Entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning mass by changing the zoning designation of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Old York Road, Broad Street, and 65th Avenue. And an ordinance establishing a one way regulation on Bryant Street from West Mount Pleasant Ave to Allen's Lane, northbound. And an ordinance amending Title 12 of the Philadelphia Code and Title Traffic Code by creating a new Chapter 12 3600 entitled Tractor Trailer Parking Ban to prohibit the parking of tractor trailers on public streets of the city of Philadelphia. Referred to committee. And a resolution observing the 20th anniversary of the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon on September 11, 2001. Okay. Next week's calendar. And a resolution observing Diaper Need Awareness Week from September 27th, 2021 to October 3rd, 2021. Next week's calendar. And a resolution also naming the 1100 block of Chelton Avenue, George James Wade, to recognize and honor the impact that George James, a local boxing trainer, had on his community. Next week's calendar. And a resolution allowing the Public Health and Human Services to Committee to hold hearings on the Philadelphia Promise Trust Fund. And that will be on today's calendar. And a resolution rededicating Allen Lane and West Mount Airy to, in the, to the memory of Richard Allen in honor of his contributions to racial justice in Philadelphia and beyond. Next week's calendar. Councilman O offers six resolutions entitled a resolution authorizing council to hold public hearings on the history of asbestos cleanup and abatement practices in Philadelphia public school. And that will be on today's calendar. And a resolution recognizing September 2021 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in Philadelphia in honor of childhood cancer patients, caregivers, survivors, and those children who have succumbed to the disease. Next week's calendar. And a resolution recognizing October 2021 as Filipino American History Month in the city of Philadelphia. Next week's calendar. And a resolution recognizing and honoring the 211th anniversary of Mexico's Independence Day. Next week's calendar. And a resolution recognizing September 2021 as National Recovery Month in Philadelphia and celebrating the 20th annual PRO Act Recovery Walks to promote recovery and work to end the stigma surrounding drug and alcohol addiction. Next week's calendar. And a resolution recognizing and honoring, recognizing, honoring, and celebrating the Philadelphia Second Alarmers on the occasion of their 100th anniversary. Next week's calendar. There are no other bills or resolutions being offered today by the members, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Decker. Uh, we have no reports from committee today. So our next order of business is consideration of the calendar. Um, there being no bills on the first reading calendar, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker for the purpose of calling up resolutions and bills on the second reading and final passes calendar. Thank you, Mr. President. The following resolutions and bills are being called up from the second reading and final passage calendars today. They are numbers 210642, 210645, 210656, and 210658. All other resolutions and bills are being held, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, before we consider, uh, we will have our public comment session. We will now take a brief five to 10 minute recess to give our technology professional an opportunity to connect everyone uh, so they may speak on the public comment session. Take a brief second. Thank you. 
Thank you, and good morning again. Uh, we're going to proceed with our public comment session. Uh, and now that everyone is connected to the meeting and before considering the resolutions and bills we have before us today, uh, we'll consider our public comment. It will go as follows. Public comment must concern matters on the second reading and final passes calendars for possible action at a session of council. A speaker on any of those matters must sign up in order to testify. You must call 215-686-3406 by 3 p.m. the day before the session to sign up for public comment. When you call, you will take your name, phone number, the number of your legislative item that you are commenting on and whether you are in support of or against the legislation and add your name to the list. We will then telephone each person on the list during the council session and invite them to our remote meeting. Um, today, uh, we will have three minutes for you to speak, uh, but just for uh, purposes of uh, making a note from time to time, we may adjust that based on the volume of callers, but we will have three minutes today. Um, in order to be fair, though, all those wishing to speak, I intend to hold faithfully to the established time limit once invited to the meeting and asked to begin your testimony. A timer will be started. We will monitor your remaining time throughout your testimony. And when there are 30 seconds remaining to your time, you will be reminded of that. And once your time, uh, your allotted time has passed, you will be asked to conclude your remarks. And shortly thereafter, you will be muted and disconnected from the remote meeting. Uh, I also reserve the right to limit the number of speakers where repetitious comments are being made on the same subject matter and to limit the scope of testimony to only certain items on the agenda during the emergency, which could affect callbacks for public comment at the meeting. Please be aware that this public meeting is being recorded, and because the meeting is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation of privacy. So by continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. I will now ask the Chief Clerk to please read the name of our first speaker. Our first speaker, Mr. President, is Queen Judith Robinson, commenting on 210205. Good morning. Good, good morning, and uh, happy birthday, Council President. Thank you. Uh, this, sure. this state you yes, Judith Robinson, Queen Judith Robinson here to comment on Bill 210205. Uh, welcome back, council members. Uh, I just want to preface my statement by saying freedom of speech is very important to me. So I just want to put a plug in for making certain that everyone who's interested in speaking in this virtual pandemic environment has an opportunity. I understand the challenges that we face with technology, etc., but I just want to make certain that uh, we make every effort to get anyone on, everyone on who wants to speak. Um, as it relates to Bill 210205, uh, I think there's a great opportunity. I, I support that bill. Unfortunately, folks don't have resources sometimes to repair their homes. As we all know, we live in the city of older homes. In that regard, I want to shine a light on uh, 2908 West Diamond Street. That's the home of Henry Ossower, or former home, I should say, a former of art, artist, world-famous artist, Henry Ossower Tanner. Also has a lot of history with his niece, Sadie Tanner Moselle Alexander, also her husband, Raymond Pace Alexander. Very historic property has a lot of history as relates to it. But it's now with a tarp on the roof. I want to shout out to some of our union brothers and sisters, some folks who um, might volunteer to support uh, refurbishing, uh, getting the roof on that property. We all know the damage water can do to a property. So I would like to just put a, a, a focus on that property as it relates to this bill and maybe doing repairs. There is a uh, license and inspection violation sign on the property, and I'm very much concerned of the damage that water will bring. So with that, I, I just want to shout out and put a shine on that building, and uh, hopefully I can get some feedback from someone is willing to help. Thank you very Thank much you. for the time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. The next speaker is Susan Nam, commenting on 210474A. 
Good morning. Uh, just state your name for the record. Please proceed with your testimony. Good morning. Uh, Susan Nam. And I'm here to oppose bill number 210474A um, for the reasons of especially that this is a citywide uh, zoning bill that it should have had uh, far more community engagement. Um, as we are experiencing these days, a lot of our community RCOs, our voices and our um, involvement and our powers as an RCO are, um, some would say, purposely being diminished. Um, zoning, citywide zoning mills especially, I feel should be um, shared with, um, through each council person's RCOs and um, we should have some sort of say in it. Uh, we see this bill as further incentivizing um, really unaffordable uh, multifamily housing that we're seeing pop up all over the city. Um, we want to see this term that's being thrown around everywhere affordable. Um, how is this being defined? Are we use which um, income medians are we using? The Philadelphia median income is. Thirty-eight thousand dollars with uh, Miss 60... Nam. Miss Nam, could you yes. could you pause your testimony briefly, Mr. President? I've I've gotten a message that we've lost the feed, the uh, the channel sixty-four feed. Uh, so there's there's no public engagement at this point. The public okay. cannot view the meeting. Is it possible this, uh, to pause briefly while we attempt to to uh, to yeah. affect the fix? Let's take a brief recess. Um, so we can get the technology straight. Lonnie, are you uh, on the line? Yes. Lonnie? Modesto? Modesto? Yes, Modesto. yes I'm here. here. Can you touch base can and, and touch be base in, and in and communication, communication, get in communication with Channel 64 and, 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 and see if it can get fixed? See if it can get fixed. Mike, I'm being told. Uh, Mike, I'm being told uh, okay. And we're okay. Uh, yes, it, it was going in and out, but it is now okay. Just give us one more minute to verify. Council President, uh, this is uh, Councilman uh, Heenan. May I be recognized real quick? Certainly. Sir. Uh, just uh, can when we resume public comment, can we uh, again state the, the bill that we're uh, hearing testimony on, please? Yes, 210474A. Should I restart my testimony or? Um... Oh, hold, hold on one second. Well, just, just want to make sure that uh, after being uh, praised uh, for having public comment, in a very transparent way, we want to make sure that we uh, adhere to the, the very lofty praise. Okay, Council President and uh, participants, we are now live. Okay. Okay, Ms. Nam? Yes. You want to just, why don't you start all over? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is Susan Nam. I'm here to oppose bill number 210474A. Um, okay, where were they? Um, I'm opposing this bill um, purely on the complete lack of community involvement in the bill, um, especially as this has to do with a citywide zoning bill. Um, this should be actually something I feel as though um, every council person should be bringing to um, their respective RCOs. Um, as we're seeing as of late, um, many of our RCOs, are um, our voices are being diminished. Our involvement is becoming irrelevant. 
Um, I feel like this would be a, a great way to combat those efforts of um, our voices being diminished. Um, I just believe that this bill is further incentivizing unaffordable uh, multifamily housing that we're seeing um, pop up um, all over our city and that we need to really put into question this term affordable that's being thrown around. Um, and what what uh, parameters are we using? Are we using the actual Philadelphia median income, which is at 38000 as opposed to the HUD median income, which stands at a little over $94,000? Um, I do not believe this bill is um, addressing the over 60,000 housing insecure Philadelphia residents at this current time. Um, so I'm here to oppose this bill today. Thank you, Council President. Thank you so much for your testimony. We appreciate it. The next speaker is Valerie Ross, commenting on 210-474-A. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, State for the record. Please proceed with your testimony. Uh, good morning. My name is Valerie Ross. I'm VP of West Philadelphians for Progressive Development, and I'm also one of the organizers of the citywide RCO coalition. I'm here to object to Bill 210474A. First, I agree with Susan Nam's concerns about the lack of public engagement with this bill and with most everything these days concerning development. Uh, secondly, I'm concerned that the bill and amendment are set up to continue to incentivize wealthy developers to continue their callous exploitation of our neighborhoods. It's time for us to end these bonuses and abatements for rich people, uh, one of the wealthiest industries in the world. They don't need the help, the rest of us do. One out of six homes purchased are now by real estate investors and that's going up by the minute. We're in the midst of a land grab and the market needs to be disciplined, not incentivized. Our neighborhoods are not the investment portfolios and tax shelters of the rich. We'd like to see the bill amended so that it protects rather than incentivizes our vulnerable communities and our naturally affordable housing. The SB 50 amendment that they have put forward in California is a good starting point for thinking about what we might do here and perhaps amending the bill accordingly. We've, we've already lost 30,000 black people in Philadelphia in the last 10 years, um, we have a huge housing crisis with 60,000 people in need of a place to live or nearing homelessness. Private developers can't save us. Uh, we can't wait for white saviors from uh, New York City to come in and flood us with money. It's time to look uh, to our own house, treasure and cultivate our unique historical city of neighborhoods. And if we do that, we'll attract tourists and newcomers alike. Um, ouch. I, just one last thing. I'd like to thank President Clark um, on behalf of the coalition for introducing the referendum for much needed reform of the ZBA. And we're really looking to our city council members to support it as well. Thank you so much. Happy birthday. Uh, thank you for the great work that you're doing. Um, bye. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. We appreciate it. The next speaker is Tiffany Green, commenting on 210-474-A. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, this is Tiffany Green from Concerned Citizens of Point Breeze RCO, and I just want to follow up with my fellow RCO uh, colleagues. Uh, we are opposing Bill uh, 210-474-A, uh, uh, one, because uh, it lacks a community process, community engagement process, which is extremely important. Um, like the, uh, my colleague said, that the um, similar to that, the bonus FAR and other features of the proposed bill are increasing market rate housing as a buy right in both residential and local communities. Okay, a community process is imperative. And what I want to say is that this bo uh, bonus height is allowing developers to build seven feet up to 48 feet and 60 feet, which is up six, seven stories in many of our two story uh, communities. Okay, a requirement of a community engagement process would allow for foster accountability, decision making, and uh, allow communities to be a part of this. To not have a community process, 
I'm sorry, now I have a community process, is really going down what I consider a Jim Crow urban process, the removal of public participation, public meetings, public vote, and not allowing community residents to discuss, dialogue, and deliberate with the developer in the community. It's a real concern at Civil Design Review this past week. They had over close to 2,000 units out of nine projects. And I'm wondering, I haven't had a chance to really go through to see how many uh, decided to pay in lieu. When we talk about in lieu and housing trust fund, well, look at us and not to uh, try to, but we, we have to look at the reality. We had a, a project of 30 uh, houses rentals and it's 2016 and now as of today only five have been built so we don't see where the housing trust fund is really helping to uh stop this um over populating our community these multi-families are built are being built very fast and it's really overpopulating and outbuilding uh the housing trust fund capabilities so we need to have a community process so that the community can have a say and shape and shape the redevelopment of their community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. We appreciate it. The next speaker is Andrew Miller, commenting on two one zero four seven four A. Good morning. Uh, uh, hi, my, this my hi. My name is Drew Miller. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Can you hear? Okay. Hi, my name is Drew Miller. Uh, I'm a constituent in the 18th Ward and a volunteer. Uh, with the River Wards LNI Coalition. Uh, I, first, I want to thank the Reverend for the moving invocation earlier. Now, I'm here to speak to you today uh, to ask you to oppose Bill 210474A until you, as the Philadelphia City Council, take the time to pass a neighbor's Bill of Rights in Philadelphia and ensure that it becomes law. Not only has, has there been the recent collapse on North Front Street, where two people were pulled from the rubble by a good Samaritan, but I'm consistently seeing in my volunteer work situations where your constituents are being bullied uh, by neighbor, neighboring development projects, pressured to make decisions about the safety of their homes and the safety of their families urgently without time to be properly informed of their rights, nor of the logistics of the situation. There was already legislation introduced in the state Senate by state senators Boscola and Farnese last year, and in the state house uh, by state rep Hohenstein very recently. Their bills have already gone through the legal check once to be introduced, uh, but they have an uphill battle in a combative Republican-controlled legislature. Uh, the state Senate bill hasn't gotten to the floor after more than a year. Now, Philly Council uh, doesn't have that hurdle. You can introduce, pass, and overrule rule the mayor if necessary to make this law in Philadelphia. Your constituents need you. We need your support. Please stand up for us. Please oppose Bill 210-474-A and any similar bills until you have enshrined your commitment to your constituents with a neighbor's Bill of Rights becoming law in Philadelphia. Thank you for your time and for your work. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. We appreciate it. The next speaker is Timur Kamran, commenting on 210-474-A. Good morning. State your name for the record and please proceed with your testimony. I'm sorry, did you say some more Cameron? I, my phone cut out. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, okay, great. Yeah, thank you. So, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for having me on today. My name is Timur Cameron and I'm here to oppose Bill 210 474 uh, I'm currently homeless, but until September 2nd, I lived in the Norris Square neighborhood in Kensington. Um, I oppose the bill because I think we shouldn't encourage development even further until the city can guarantee that all the developments already taking place is safe, um, all the construction is safe, and until the city can pass a neighbor's bill of rights to make sure that neighbors actually have rights when it comes to their property or their lives being damaged by unsafe construction practices. Um, so unsafe, like Wild West-style construction practices are endemic in my neighborhood where there's two or three projects on every block and across the city, too. Um, currently, when construction damages the property and lives of people who live in the city, there's basically no recourse or accountability for contractors, developers, and the banks who fund their projects. Uh, so I lived next to the building that collapsed on Front Street on September 2nd. The building next to me was undergoing excavation on the foundation without a permit on the day, uh, on the day of the collapse and the days before. On the day of the collapse on Front Street, 
uh, my across the street neighbor actually warned the contractors that if they kept digging, that they would cause a collapse. And we've seen this because we've seen these practices before in our neighborhood. Um, so the contractors dug below the silt line, but didn't pin the foundation property. They left properly. They left the building without a foundation for several days. And when the rain came, it destabilized, destabilized the neighboring buildings, causing them to collapse with my two elderly neighbors inside who miraculously were uh, survived with relatively minor injuries. Um, but they lost everything in their house when their house collapsed because of this unsafe construction. All their belongings, including the ashes of their son, were unretrievable from the rubble of their collapsed home, according to the contractors. Uh, and the collapse also caused my building to be condemned, which was next door. Um, so basically four people were rendered homeless. And also the 17-year run of a popular local business, Lucky's Donut, was ended um, because the building was condemned. Um, and, and there's been no accountability or really investigation into what was truly the cause of this collapse or to confirm what the cause of the collapse was. Um, so the construction practices in my neighborhood and across the city are out of control. Neighbors know that it's a Wild West type situation uh, and calling L&I and being put on a nine month wait list doesn't solve the problems that we're facing. So whether it's being rendered homeless like me and my neighbors, property damage or dangerous lack of dust control, contractors do whatever they want with no consequences. The city should investigate the collapse on Front Street and determine the cause and hold those responsible accountable for making four people homeless, nearly killing two of them and destroying the livelihood of a beloved small business. Um, and I also agree with uh, Drew's comment earlier about a neighbor's bill of rights. I think it's necessary to ensure the safety of people in our city when it comes to construction practices. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you for your testimony. There are no other speakers in the public comment list, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Decker. That concludes our public comment session. Uh, we will now consider the bills and resolutions on the second reading and final passes calendar. Uh, Mr. Decker, please read the title of resolution number 210-642. A resolution recognizing the school district of Philadelphia for becoming the first Pennsylvania school district to acquire electric school buses. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All in favor? Indicate by Aye. saying now. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries, and this resolution is adopted. <clears throat> Mr. Decker, please read the tell of resolution number 210-645. A resolution calling on Mayor James F. Kenney and his administration to work collaboratively with City Council, as well as business, labor, and diverse community stakeholders to establish a commission on tax equity and growth, which would examine and assess the city's tax structure and advance a tax plan that, center, that centers racial equity and inclusive growth. Um, okay. All right. Uh, Chair, recognize the councilwoman again for a motion on the resolution. Yes, I'd like to move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that the resolution be adopted. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. Um, Mr. Decker, please read the title of resolution number 210-656. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority deeds conveying fee simple title 2, 4919, 4931, 4933, 4935, 4937, 4943, 4953, 4991, 4991 and a half, 4993 and a half, 4995 and 4997 and a half, West Gerard Avenue in the third Councilmatic District. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gautier for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. Thank you. This has been moved and probably second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it, and then the resolution is adopted. Mr. Decker, please read the title of resolution number 210-658.
A resolution honoring and congratulating champion of the week, Central High School baseball and softball teams for their successful 2020-2021 season and winning their respective public league championship games. Chair recognizes Councilman Thomas for a motion. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, I have it in that resolution as a Mr. Decker, do you have any additional resolutions? I do, Mr. President. A resolution authorizing the Committee on Law and Government and the Committee on Commerce and Economic Development to hold joint hearings to examine the relationship between public safety and the economic vitality of neighborhood commercial corridors and further to explore any and all broad-based neighborhood-focused and intergovernmental public safety initiatives that have worked in the city in the past and have worked or are working in other cities. Introduced by Council Parker. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. Second. It's moved to probably second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Uh, aye. 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 Ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the Committee on Housing, Neighborhood and Development and the Homeless to hold a hearing to discuss the impact of tangled titles in Philadelphia, introduced by Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. Second. We move and probably second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. And that, adopt, that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the City Council Committees on Children and Youth and Finance to hold joint hearings on a plan to fund a comprehensive remediation and modernization of Philadelphia's public school buildings to address major facilities flaws, adapt to a changing climate, and ensure public school students have the safe and modern buildings they deserve. Introduced by Councilwoman Gim. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gim. Yes, thank you very much, Council President. I just neglected to mention that I wanted to thank uh, my co my co-sponsors on this uh, Councilman Green uh, Council members Bass Brooks Dom Gautier Gilmore Richardson Hina you're muted Councilwoman Gim thank you so much Majority Leader um, I just wanted to uh, say that I wanted to express thanks to my co-sponsors on this uh, Co uh, Council Finance Committee Chair uh, Derek Green and Council Members Bass, Brooks, Dom, Gautier, Gilmore Richardson, Heenan, Johnson, Squilla, and Thomas. And with that, I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, then indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. In a resolution calling on the Committee on Licenses and Inspections to hold hearings examining construction code requirements, the enforcement of those requirements, inspector caseload and inspector staffing ratios, construction working conditions, and the city's response to worker misclassification on construction sites. Introduced by Councilman Heenan. Chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing City Council's Committee of the Whole to hold public hearings on the status of the City of Philadelphia's rebuild initiative. Introduced by Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson on behalf of Councilman Jones. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the City Council Committee on Public Safety to hold public hearings on the interim report issued by the 100 Shooting Review Committee introduced by Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson on behalf of Councilman Jones. Here again recognizes Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution on behalf of Council Member Jones. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing this special committee on gun violence prevention to conduct hearings to examine the shortage 
of trauma counseling services and its impact on victims and co-victims of, of gun violence, introduced by Councilman Johnson. Chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Yeah, thank you, Council President. I want to thank all my colleagues for um, sponsoring this very, very critically important resolution. So I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 I have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution allowing the Public Health and Human Services to commit, Committee to hold hearings on the Philadelphia Promise Trust Fund, introduced by Councilwoman Bass. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of this resolution. Second. If we move to probably second, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 I have it. And their resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing council to hold public hearings on the history of asbestos cleanup and abatement practices in Philadelphia public schools, introduced by Councilman O. Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. May I be heard on this before I make a motion? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, in 1989, the Associated Press wrote an article stating that it would cost uh, $425.6 million to completely remediate asbestos in Philadelphia schools. At the time, the federal government issued strict instructions, including a $5,000 per day fine uh, for schools that did not have a detailed plan. The school district said it spent $50 million removing and remediating asbestos. Uh, it was spending another $75.8 million on asbestos removal and remediation. Detailed records were kept. They were removing asbestos in hazmat suits, double plastic um, protection, 20 pound bags with detailed records of where this asbestos was being taken. Uh, we have uh, asked and received none of this information, um, and asbestos has come up uh, time and time again. Um, in the article, uh, schools were specifically mentioned in terms of the removal of uh, asbestos, and those schools are in the news today for asbestos problems. I, I do think it is critical, along with every other resolution and hearing that has been introduced by members of this body trying to get to the bottom of this problem that we also look at the history and look at the records and hold persons responsible accountable if that's necessary for what appears to be very questionable practices for money received and um, solutions not provided. So with that, I uh, move for the op adoption of the resolution. Second. Thank you. We just moved in properly. Second, all in favor of the resolution indicate by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. There are no other resolutions on the final passage calendar, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, that completes our calendar for today. Uh, we will move to our speeches. Uh, prior to recognizing members regarding speeches, I will note for the record at this time, we will use the chat feature available on Microsoft's team to allow members to signify that they wish to be recognized. Uh, in order to comply with the Sunshine Act, the chat feature must only be used for this particular purpose. With that said, are there any speeches on behalf of the minority? And I see we have Councilwoman Brooks. Thank you, Council President. Um, I feel really energized to be back in session with my colleagues, and I was inspired to see each of our offices busy over the summer strategizing for um, what I'm sure is to be a dynamic and productive fall and winter. Today is Constitution Day, and 234 years ago today, our con Constitution was signed. To honor the Constitution, the work that we have yet to do to ensure the rights of all citizens are protected. I introduced a resolution today urging Congress to pass Joint Resolution 21. This resolution is known as the Abolition Amendment and would strike the Slavery Clause from the 13th Amendment. This clause 
as many of you know, is racist in origin as well as in practice, and it allows slavery to continue as punishment for crime and contributes to the ongoing um, economic marginalization of incarcerated people. When slavery was abolished in 1865, this loophole resulted in Southern localities implementing black codes, laws which criminalized things like loitering, vagrancy, and allowed whites to continue to profit off of unpaid labor of black Americans. Over the years, racist policies like Jim Crow, the war on drugs, three strike laws, dramatically expanded in the US prison population. And in combination with severe plea deals and harsh mandatory minimums, these policies facilitated generations of poverty, broke up family, and incentivized um, the over incarceration of Black people in the United States. Today, the US is the most incarcerated country in the world, with nearly 2 million people behind bars and Black people being five times more likely to be increased incarcerated than their white counterparts. In order to decarcerate our communities and protect the basic rights of all Americans, we must eliminate this exploitive labor practice that strips incarcerated people of their humanity and lines the pockets of corporations. As labor shortages sweep this country, there's also an immediate threat that this cheap, unethical labor force will be further exploited. Incarcerated people are not expendable and slavery should have no loopholes. With the uprisings against police violence and systemic racism over the past year and a half, revo and a half revolutionizing the way our city and country think about racial and economic justice, it is our collective responsibility to act on this promise and advocate for the basic rights of our community members. And I want to thank the co-sponsoring council members, uh, council members Bass, Dom, Gautier, Gilmore Richardson, Green, Gim, Johnson, and Thomas for their commitment to this issue. Thank you so much, Council President. I look forward to working with each of you to serve the people in Philadelphia in the months ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Keep up the hard work. I appreciate it. Uh, next up, I believe we have Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. Um, first, I'd like to uh, just uh, uh, note that um, on Friday, September 24th, uh, we will be hosting the uh, third annual Latin American Book Fair in the courtyard of City Hall. Um, and uh, certainly everyone is in invited to attend. Um, and uh, there will be uh, 30 authors, uh, food, and of course, books uh, for the kids and for the adults. Um, there will be music and uh, dancing and all kinds of fun related to literacy in both English and Spanish. Uh, the other thing I want to bring up, Council President, in line with what um, has been much of the conversation today and over the summer, is uh, the school district and uh, how it can be held accountable to the people of this city. Uh, we have some excellent schools. We have some excellent teachers and administrators, no doubt about that. They are award winning. But so many of the people of our city are uh, just tr uh, beyond troubled. Uh, they're, uh, they are just looking at the schools in their neighborhoods um, and opting for um, any way to get out of them. That has been going on for a long time in this city. When I look at it historically, it's gone back into the 1800s and before that. In 1867, the General Assembly uh, established the law that the basically the, the controllers of the Board of Education would be appointed by the Board of Judges. And uh, in, in the 1965, in a, uh, a move for good governance, uh, this city, uh, uh, determined that there would be a blue ribbon panel and then appointment by the mayor. Um, throughout this process, one of the problems that have occurred is that the, 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 the disparity in education, the under-resourced uh, um, schools uh, are the same. And uh, with great frustration, including the problems that we just talked about, including the fact that the uh, uh, parents and students seem to have very little ability 
to um, communicate to the schools about things such as start times, um, transportation, uh, safety, curriculum, um, and accountability and transparency. I have introduced a bill to uh, take the nine member appointed school board and give the people, the residents of this city, the opportunity to elect five of the of the nine. The mayor can appoint four and the people can elect five. And each one of the five is responsible for education throughout the city, but they will come in one of five zones so the people know directly who is responsible for the conditions of their school in their neighborhoods in that zone. Um, I do think that change will not occur until we put students, parents, residents, and the community uh, in a decision-making seat at the table. And so the question is, we repeat, repeatedly come back to these questions. Uh, we, we repeatedly come back to the fact that teachers are purchasing required school items that children with disabilities are not being provided what is required by law, that constitutional requirements in education are not being met. And we understand the problems in education, yet we don't have the records. There isn't a level of transparency. And I do think at this point in time, that a change has to occur where the people have a voice. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you so much. Uh, speeches on behalf of the majority, Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. Um, this Saturday at 1 p.m. from 1 to 4, uh, the Philadelphia Public Banking Coalition uh, will be having a national visiting, visioning summit on public banking. Uh, for those um, who are watching um, this council session and would like to participate and view the session, uh, feel, free, feel free to go to philapublicbanking.org. Uh, also for members of council and others on the teams, uh, I put in the link for that session. Uh, this has been uh, the work of the Philadelphia Bank Coalition, and I've been proud to partner with them on this initiative. Uh, we've been working very hard to create the nation's first municipal public bank. Um, going back to the middle of the spring, um, we have been meeting with um, both uh, our outside council, Holland and Knight, as on Tuesdays and meeting with the law department and the treasurer's office on Thursdays to go through all the regulatory you know, necessities that we need to do in order to create this entity. I'm looking forward to a, a great conversation on Saturday. I know right now we already have 320 attendees uh, who've signed up for uh, the summit on Saturday. And we'll hear from you know, elected officials from San Francisco and also others from New York and Los Angeles and experts all around the country regarding the public banking movement, um, both at the federal, state, and local level. So once again, that'll be uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, you can go to philapublicbanking.org in order to register for uh, the summit. I'm uh, looking forward for a great conversation um, tomorrow. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman McCarthy. Thank you so much, Council President. Um, good morning, colleagues and the viewing public. It's a pleasure to be back in session, continuing our work on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. As too many Philadelphians know all too well, our city's housing markets are changing rapidly and we are contending with an affordability crisis. Renters and homeowners alike are at risk of displacement due to the increasing unaffordability of housing in our neighborhoods. It's unjust that so many Philadelphians are finding themselves pushed out of the neighborhoods and communities they call home, and in many cases have for generations. As policymakers, it's our job to develop solutions to challenges like this one. This session, my focus is on addressing this crisis head on. And I guess you could say I'm hitting the ground running. I was glad to join the Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia Coalition for Affordable Communities at a rally just before our council meeting to highlight the importance of putting land back in community hands. The city is sitting on a massively valuable asset, 
more than 5,000 parcels of surplus vacant land that could provide transformational impact to our neighborhoods. By using this land for purposes that are beneficial to community, like affordable housing or community gardens, we can ensure that neighborhoods across Philadelphia will benefit from publicly held land for generations to come. That's why I plan to introduce legislation that would give grassroots community land trusts a leg up in the competition to acquire city-owned land. We want to make sure that the city does its part to put vacant land towards uses that will truly prioritize communities in their best interest rather than profit. This session, I'm also looking forward to making progress on the Mixed Income Neighborhoods Overlay Bill, which I introduced with Councilmember Sanchez back in June. This legislation would require new housing developments of 10 or more units to include 20% deep affordability. Private developers are building at a breakneck pace, but they aren't going to create affordable housing out of the kindness of their hearts. And that's why this policy intervention is so deeply important. In addition to housing legislation, this session I'll continue to focus on ending our city's gun violence crisis. While shootings have been trending in the right direction recently, Philadelphia is still on track to have its most violent year in modern history, and we cannot accept this as a status quo. Just yesterday, the Philadelphia Inquirer reported that there are 57 blocks in our city where 10 or more people have been shot since 2015. These blocks are located in areas with overwhelming amounts of poverty and blight and 53 out of the 57 are in areas that were redlined decades ago. There couldn't be a clearer argument for an intensive and targeted approach to this crisis, one that focuses not just on enforcement, but on investment and resources for the people and geographic areas most directly impacted by violence. And since government created the conditions that led to our current gun violence crisis, it's also government's duty to rectify the harm caused by those policy decisions. One important step in the right direction is a historic $20 million investment Philly is making in grassroots anti-violence efforts as part of the budget that council passed earlier this year. These programs are run by trusted organizations. They know our kids, they know our neighborhoods, and they know what keeps people safe and out of trouble. And it's exciting that the city is putting this unprecedented support behind them. I was glad to advocate for this funding during budget negotiations, and I'll do everything I can to ensure that the money gets to the organizations that need it most. At the end of the day, every Philadelphia resident deserves to live in a desirable neighborhood. That means safe streets, that means affordable homes, that means good schools with safe facilities, that means green spaces and trees, that means rec centers with plentiful hours and youth programming. And it's a privilege to be a part of this body that has the power and the heart to truly move the needle on, the, on these issues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Fiona Sanchez. Thank you, Council President. And I really want to do what I guess Bondell used to call I underline, capitalize, highlight, underscore um, some of the sentiments of today of my colleagues, particular Council Member Gautier, as we talk about the ho housing crisis um, and some of the challenges. So I, I want to really emphasize some of what she said. And my, my comments today are um, about what council has done, and and we have not been shy about moving ahead uh, of this, uh, of some of these challenges, um, as we did to this week, as we announced the MPI initiative and affordable housing, and and as I said at that press conference, creating these choice neighborhoods. Um, council will be ahead of that curve and is not gun shy about investing whatever is necessary to do that, and that's why for me today. You know, all of these things have to be connected. Uh, and so many times uh, the bureaucracy and when we're working at our different lanes, um, we lack that connectivity and I think it's important. Um, I will too, uh, during this council session, continue to focus the work that I've done around affordable housing and working with, my, with uh, the housing committee around these issues. But I wanna bring to light an issue that I'm going to uh, constantly talk about over the next few months. Um, and if we are lucky enough over the next year, uh, 
The federal government has given Philadelphia a very unique opportunity when it designated 106, 863 uh, housing vouchers uh, to help the Philadelphia deal with our homeless population and obviously many of our families who find themselves caught up in transitional housing. Um, housing stability is a key component um, as we support young people through their trauma, as we support fo folks through their addiction, as we support women who are victims of domestic violence and their children. A voucher to me is a toolbox in ending poverty, intergenerational poverty. And I want to uh, you know, urge the administration um, to really be intentional and deliberate and transparent in their criteria for how they're going to allocate 863 vouchers that have over a $15 million value annually as we move forward. We can't talk about a housing crisis and our ability to develop and not look at this tool as another mechanism for us to address housing affordability and more importantly, housing access to underserved communities in all parts of the city of Philadelphia. This is the first batch. I expect that we will get a second batch and I will do everything that I can along with my council colleagues to insist that these vouchers be given to our families, many who may have a roof or over their heads, but they're in that eviction list, they're in our transitional housing list, and some of them are not in our homeless system because culturally, as is the case of the Latino community, we don't go to shelters. And many people have rejected, and COVID highlighted, have rejected congregate care. So people are couch surfing, they're sleeping in, in people's basements, and this opportunity of these 863 and what is forthcoming has to be part of the answer, and families have to be on top of that priority list. So I will be um, introducing a resolution to have hearings so we can talk about this and make sure that this process is transparent and that we're being efficient in how we're providing support. Everybody needs housing and housing should be a right but we have different product lines that are more efficient more effective and more impactful and so i want to make sure that we are using those models as part of this what we do with mpi on new construction and preservation is important what we do around using our uh, land and and the city-owned land is part of that toolbox but it has to be together and I will not allow the bureaucracy to operate in silos and not think together about how we do this and how we leverage and maximize this. So I want to reinforce again what the chairwoman of our housing committee has stated. I want to thank you, Council President, um, and, on, and our leadership team, Councilwoman Parker, who hosted us. We are being aggressive and bold, and I'm I am even more committed to our commitment of the the new normal will be very, very different than what we've experienced in the last two years. So thank you, Council President. Thank, thank you so much, Councilwoman. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, and I, I guarantee you that we're up to the task, but we're going to get it done. Um, that concludes our speeches today. I want to thank you all very much. Welcome back. Uh, look forward to rocking and rolling. Uh, in this upcoming session, uh, a lot of people are depending on us to continue uh, very aggressive and unprecedented level of commitment, and we're going to do what we have to do. So thank you so much. Uh, with that, I would like to recognize Councilman Squilla uh, for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Council Thank you, Mr. President. I did have it in front of me. I apologize. No, sorry. My fault for not giving me a heads up. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, Councilman Jones is the role. Uh, I move that council stand adjourned until Thursday, September 23rd, 2021, at 10 a.m. on behalf of Councilmember Squilla. Second. <laughs> it's been moved in second that council stand adjourned until Thursday, September 23rd, 2021 at 10 a.m. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed.
Motion carries. Thank you all very much. Uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great good day. Have a, have a great day. Happy birthday.